For nomads, no grass means no life. To Jim Wuji is contemplating a very uncertain future. He lives here in Chumalai County, more than 4,000 meters above sea level. But his home and livelihood are under threat. The grass is getting worse and worse every year, and it is being eaten by caterpillars and pikas. Nomads rely on the water and grass. If there is no water, then we have many problems. Tachin comes from a long line of Tibetan herdsmen who've been roaming the plains for centuries. When I was 11 or 12, Chumalai County used to have thriving pastures. All around here, there was too much grass to be cut. I needed to carry a long rope to bind the load on my back. If an antelope lay down, others couldn't see it through the grass. That's not an overstatement at all. The problem is not exclusive to Chumalai County. The area is home to the sources of three of Asia's great rivers, the Yellow, the Yangtze and the Mekong. Any ecological catastrophe here would affect hundreds of communities downstream. For Tachin, it means possibly having to leave the land that he's called home for 30 years. In 1983, this piece of grassland was so prosperous, plentiful grass everywhere. It's getting worse and worse now. The change is very big. Now the cattle can only lick the grass. Jumbar Kai is director of the local meteorological administration. He grew up in the area and now estimates that in just a few years, Tachin's grasslands will be suffocated by the encroaching sands. Although it's rained a lot in this area in recent years, it's getting harder for the grasslands to contain the water. All the water penetrates deeper down underground and cannot be conserved near the surface. The land would still be very dry even if it rained yesterday. Ground temperatures have slowly risen on Tachin's land, so a permanent frozen layer of soil just beneath the ground has melted away. The permafrost had acted to hold water near the surface, allowing the grasslands to thrive. But without it, the rain drains away, leaving no water for the grass to feed on. Rising snow lines and melting glaciers are making the climate worse which in turn keep the Three Rivers Nature Reserve area drier. The desertification of the land is getting worse too. Someday the place might not be suitable for human habitation and for grazing. A short drive from Tachin's farm is Chimalai town. Once a small market community, it's now growing with new housing blocks bearing the name of whole villages that have been relocated as part of a government effort to conserve the grasslands. The idea is simple, move the people and their animals to reduce the pressure on the grasslands. According to what people say, everyone used to fall in love with the beauty of our area. It was truly a beautiful place. Jemme Tatok was a leader of Gayang village in Madao Township, near the source of the Yellow River, but was moved 200 kilometers west three years ago, along with the 50 other families from the village, when the land was no longer able to sustain the herdsmen. There was no flowing water in the area, only lakes. In the past, the water around the Yellow River source started to melt in the eighth months of the lunar calendar, and the ice stayed for a long time in the summer. Now there is less and less water. In a small field on the edge of the town is Samgai, an ex-herder who relocated to Chumalai from neighboring Sichuan province. He says he gets paid a small monthly entitlement for leaving his land, but has lost his animals in a way of life that stretches back for centuries. I have no idea why it's become so dry. It rained a lot at the beginning of this spring, but not much towards the end. I don't know why it's like this. 
In Chimalai, where the grass has not yet vanished, some guy has been able to raise horses. Today he's meeting with other ex-herdsmen to race them in the hope of holding on to one of his traditions and to earn a little extra money. Last year he won the district's top prize. I got 50,000 yuan as rewards from it. Now I'm selling and buying horses for a living. I now have over 10 horses. Everyone at the dusty racetrack complains about the lack of water. The shortage is so severe that even in Chimalai town, the taps have long since run dry. Instead, water is supplied by enterprising townsfolk, who dig ever deeper wells, then deliver for a fee. The deeper the well, the higher the price. <laughs> People buy drinking water from tractors. Sometimes the price will go up and sometimes it will go down. Many people have to buy the water. Some people also have wells and they get water from there. But most of the time there is no water and like these days there is no water and we have to buy it. <laughs> Each family has to spend around a quarter of their income just to pay for their daily needs. It's an issue the local government is working hard to resolve, but in a climate that is turning against it. Academics from the Chinese Academy of Sciences, the country's top scientific body, conclude that rising temperatures will in time completely thaw out the permafrost of the plateau and turn it into desert. De Chin does not need scientists to tell him this. He has his own way to gauge the changing climate. It's truly getting warmer. I can measure it by when the meat starts to freeze. De Chin understands that it won't be long before he'll have to leave his land for good. But he's hanging on to his traditions as long as he can. For Jen Mei, it's too late. The nomads depend on the livestock and the livestock depend on the grass and water. If there is no water and grass, there is no livestock. And there is no livestock, there is no life left for the nomads. Scientists can only speculate how long it will be before the plateau tundra thaws out and turns completely to desert. The nomads of Chumalai have a very uncertain future. For Assignment Asia, I'm DJ Clark on the Qinghai Plateau in China.